This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 5, Section 2, Electron Arrangement in Atoms. In this section, we're going to describe the three rules for writing electron configuration of these elements. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, read as you write, and then play to hear my words. So the electron configuration is how these electrons are arranged in the orbitals of an atom. And we want to remember that those electrons are going to be arranged according from lowest to highest energy. So those electrons, the first electrons, go in the lowest energy, and then they move up. So there's actually going to be three videos to this section. This video is going to understand and write the orbital filling diagram. And the next uh, video is going to be talking about the electron configuration and how to write those. And then finally, part three is going to go through those practice problems. So there's three rules to follow, the Aufbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and the Hunt's rule. So let's talk about these three rules first. So the three rules, or sorry, the first rule, the Aufbau principle, is that these electrons occupy the orbitals of the lowest energy first. Well, that's what I just told you, right? So the first electron that's in an atom is going to occupy the very, very lowest energy first. And Aufbau means to build, so that actually makes sense, right? How do you build on things? Well, you always start either at the first or the lowest or the smallest, right? And you usually build up from there. The Pauli exclu exclusion principle, however, is these orbitals, and he tried to explain that these orbitals, or I call them boxes, can only contain one or two electrons. So these electrons actually repel each other, which you know, right? The same charges are gonna repel each other. So what's gonna happen is each orbital, right, is gonna have one electron first before it starts pairing up. And the way we show that they have opposite spins, that they repel each other, is the first electron we're going to show as an arrow up, and the second electron, if there's a second electron, is going to have an arrow down. So he came up with the fact that there are no two electrons in an atom that have exactly the same quantum numbers. In other words, every single electron in that atom is going to have a unique address. And that's where that uh, arrow up, arrow down comes in. So if we think about that orbital, like that box I'm talking about, that's that orbital. There's the electrons that go inside. So the first electron is going to be up. And because those electrons repel each other, they're going to have that opposite spin. And we're going to show that if there's a second electron that goes in that orbital with an arrow down. So Hunt's rule kind of says the same thing, um, but let's think about something like the P orbital, right? The uh, sub level or sub shape of P has three orbitals. So if it has three orbitals, we're going to fill in one electron at a time, and then we're going to start pairing up. So in other words, this is wrong, okay? So we have three orbitals here and we have four electrons. Well, they're not going to squeeze in here, right? There's three available, so one is going, going to go in each before pairing up. So this is how it should look. So up, 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 and then if there's more, we're going to put one down. So think about a bus, right? Most people don't like to sit alone. And if there's too many people, they're really forced to sit together, kind of like those electrons. They like to be solo unless they're forced to be a pair. So there's three ways to show the address of electrons. The first way is the orbital filling diagram, and that's what this video is going to show. The other way is electron configuration and what I call the shorthand configuration. So read over that just to get an idea of what we're going to be discussing. So let's recap those four quantum numbers. What do you remember? Maybe pause the video and come up with uh, a definition or what you would um, relate or represent the principal quantum number, the sublevel, the orbitals, or the spin. Hopefully this makes sense. The principle is that energy level. And remember, for the most part, your energy level is going to equal the period number. And I say for the most part because it does get a little complicated um, it does when we get into the D and F sublevels. Ah, speaking of sublevels, did you come up with shapes? The S, P, D, and F. Orbitals are going to be those boxes. Remember that like S has one orbital or one box. P has one, three orbitals or three boxes. And remember those spins are just really representing those electrons as arrows. So the orbital filling diagram just tells us that we're going to start with the lowest energy first. 
Later on, we're going to talk about how these energy levels actually overlap, called hybridization. We want to remember that all orbitals do not fill up in the order of the energy level. Just like I said, uh, energy is sublevel D and sublevel F are going to be slightly different. It's not going to equal the energy level. So they're not going to fill up in order of energy level. They're going to fill up in order of energy. And we want to remember that each box, right, each orbital shape has room for two electrons with those opposite spins. So let's look at that first energy level. In other words, first period on the periodic table. This is only going to be the s orbital. And remember, those s orbitals can only have two electrons. So we're either going to have the 1s1 or the 1s2. The second energy level, now we have s's and p orbitals available. So two electrons in the s and six electrons in the p. And this is something you've already learned last section. So there's going to be a total of eight electrons, huh, two, eight, hint, 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 electrons total in that second period. And again, now we're going to have the 2s and the 2p part of that second energy level. But remember, the 1s2 has to be filled up first because they're going to have lower energy. Now, this third and fourth period, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So let's look again at that third period. Here we have the s and the p orbitals. Again, very similar to energy level two, or I should say period two, uh, where you have the s and the p and you have a maximum eight. However, let's get to that third energy level in the fourth period. And what do I mean by that? Well, in our fourth period, we have S, P, D, and uh, orbitals available. So we have two electrons in the S. But what's going to happen here in this area, the transition elements, we're really going to fill up 10 electrons in the D shell first, then six electrons in the P. So we technically have 18 electrons. Huh, does that ring a bell? Two, eight, 18. <laughs> So we want to remember that the amount of energy needed here is really 4s2, 3d10 before the 4p6. And again, your beginning energies, um, that beginning electron configuration, that's really what we're writing here, comes first. It always goes in order. So why? What's going on here? What's going on with that 3d subshell? Well, these are all the orbitals available. Really, all these orbitals are available to every single atom, every single element. So when we add electrons, again, electrons are going to repel each other because they have the same charges, the energy of the orbitals are going to change. And see that adjustment happening there? So those energies of those sublevels are going to adjust themselves because those electrons are repelling themselves. So you also might see um, lines instead of boxes, just to show you a different example. So here's uh, an a, a electron filling orbital, orbital filling diagram just with lines and arrows. But what I wanted to show you is the 4s really has less energy than the 3d. So that makes sense, right? The 4, no, I'm sorry, that doesn't make sense, right? 3p should go to 3d, but the 4s has less energy. So it's going to be filled up first, then the 3d, then the 4p. So I just want to show you that we have to fill it up according to energy. So in your notes as a guide, you're going to use this for now, right? Use this as your cheat sheet, and you're going to start here with the 1s, and you're going to kind of follow the energy level. You want to make sure you're following the amount of energy um, and not just the boxes. So now let's look at some examples. If you don't already have your periodic table, please do that because we're going to have to locate that element and we're going to have to figure out how many electrons that element has in order to fill up that orbital filling diagram correctly. So let's look at hydrogen. Hopefully you can spot hydrogen pretty quickly. It's the first element. So it has one electron. We're going to have one box, right, for the 1s orbital that gets filled up first and the one arrow going up. That's it. That's the orbital filling diagram for him. Now let's look at helium. He's the second guy. He's going to have two electrons. So again, 1s, let's fill him up first. We're going to have an arrow up and an arrow down. Well, that's two electrons. We're done with helium. Those are your first two. Now let's look at lithium. Find lithium on your periodic table like I just did. Three electrons. 
So the 1s is going to get filled with the 1 up and the 1 down. Oh, what comes next? Again, look at that orbital filling diagram. What's the next one listed on the energy is going to be the 2s orbital. And again, only one box because s only has one box. So arrow up, arrow, oops, sorry, arrow up, and that's it, right? That's three electrons. Your oxygen, again, pause, find oxygen and how many electrons it has. Oxygen is there and it has eight electrons. All right, so 1s is first, it's gonna have two electrons. So eight minus two is six. So let's do another orbital of 2s, that's the next energy and two electrons go in there. Now we have four electrons left over and what's next in our orbital filling diagram? 2p. P's have three boxes, right? They have three orbitals. So we have four electrons. Now remember, according to those rules that I just talked about, one electron in each box first. So we have enough for each box to have one, and now we can pair up again, showing with that opposite spin. Now, germanium is a little bit trickier, and that's quite why I even had it's a little bit longer just to show you and get, get, get an idea of how to fill these up. Um, so search for germanium. Hopefully you found him here. How many electrons does he have? Again, the atomic number is 32, so he has 32 electrons. All right, so I'm gonna do this one a little bit quicker, but I'm filling them in the order of energy. So two in the 1s, that should make sense. Two in the 2s, six in the, uh, in the 2p, two in the 3s, then we have six in the 3p. What goes next is the 4s, okay? The 4s goes next then the 3d and we're all filled up so far then in the 4p area we're only going to have two electrons and those two electrons <clears throat> are going to be one in each orbital before we pair up and just as a reminder the 5s and the 4d and the um the five uh, the, the you know even continuing the 6s and the um the 6p, all of those are still available, just so you understand that they're available. And in the future, we're gonna talk about ground state versus excited state of these electrons. So they're gonna be able to move up an energy level, even though nothing's being occupied there, they're, the electrons can still jump to those particular <clears throat> areas of energy. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. This is a video that you might have to re-watch and keep practicing. And again, we'll do more practice problems uh, also in class uh, to figure out this orbital filling diagram. And when you get to the electron configuration, um, it might even make more sense as well.